Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about intermittent fasting and what is the science behind it. And at the end of this video, we'll get to know what are the myth versus what is the reality. So stay tuned till the end of this video. Intermittent fasting is an eating pattern that cycles between period of fasting and period of eating. So simply in your feeding pattern in a day, you would have a window which is so-called feeding window where you can eat. And there would be a fasting window where you can't simply eat or you fast. Now, it doesn't specify which food you should be eating or which calories you should be taking, but it really implies that when you should eat that. So, it doesn't have any restriction of a specific type of food. In the feeding window, you can consume all the food and that's pretty beneficial, right? You can enjoy carbs, you can enjoy protein and fat, everything. But in the fasting window, you cannot intake any of carbohydrate, protein or fat. And you have to strictly follow that fasting window. Now, let me tell you that how intermittent fasting works. And does intermittent fasting cause weight loss? And if it does weight loss, then how? And what are the health benefits of intermittent fasting? So, let's quickly look at the health benefits. You would have an increased growth hormone secretion while you are fasting for long. It reduces inflammation, improves your cognitive abilities. It also controls blood glucose level and it lowers the insulin level. Ultimately, the biggest achievement from intermittent fasting is the weight loss. That's pretty assured. Lastly, it has some anti-aging effects as well if followed properly. Now, let us understand what really happens when we are fed versus we are fasted. When we are fed, in our liver, glucose is present in a plenty amount. Glucose would be converted to glucose 6-phosphate and intermediate. Ultimately, it would, form, it would be forming pyruvate, another intermediate. Ultimate goal is to run that TCA cycle and generate energy, which is important for our physical performance. Now, when we are fasting, let's see what happens. But before that, let me tell you, when we have too much of glucose, then we really don't need to get a lot of energy because we have sufficient energy in our body. Then body stores that excess amount of glucose in glycogen. Later on, it can use the glucose to channel into pentose phosphate pathway and generate NADPH, which further helps in other anabolic pathways such as fatty acid biosynthesis. But in fasted state, glucose is low, right? And in that condition, we won't be having a lot of uh, TCA cycle going, right? But body cannot perform without glucose, especially our brain cannot, right? So in that circumstances, the glycogen which was stored in the liver would be broken down and it would form glucose. Later on, several intermediates of TCA cycle would be also generate pyruvate and ultimately glucose would be produced that would be used by the brain. Now, if we fast for very long, then fatty acid would be broken down and it would generate ketone bodies. That would work like an alternative fuel. So let us try to understand the timeline of these events that I talked about. So this is the starting point of your fasting. Then immediately what would happen is there would be glycogenolysis. Your stored glucose reserves would be broken down and glucose would be utilized to fuel your body. Then eventually neoglucogenesis would happen. This is a process where body makes glucose from non-glucose sources. So it would break down uh, amino acids or it can also take other uh, intermediates of Krebs cycle and channel it to form glucose. After all of these, like after 12 hours of these events, ketogenesis would start. And if we wait further, then autophagy would occur. Autophagy is a self-recycling process where body recycles its own organelles or several cell types and that's pretty good. And autophagy is important aspect of anti-aging property. Now, let us look at what really happens during intermittent fasting. First of all, there would be glycogenolysis, there would be gluconeogenesis eventually. All of that lead to production of glucose. 
but when we fast for longer ultimately ketone bodies such as acetoacetate acetone or beta hydroxybutyrate would be produced and that can fuel our brain during this prolonged fasting period even if brain doesn't have the supply of glucose it has alternative fuel ketone bodies so simply ketone bodies in the fasted state work like reserve fuel now in this fasted state the significant effect is the fat breakdown in the adipose tissues fat would be broken down and that fat would generate acetyl coa this acetyl coa would be utilized for ketogenesis or production of ketone bodies because we know in the fasted state ketone bodies are the key resources to fuel our body and the way this resource is generated is by breaking down of fat so you can imagine what's the end result is your body would start burning fat and eventually you would be thinner right let's try to understand the molecular mechanism behind it let's say we are at a starved state in this situation our atp level is low because atp production is not happening and amp level is high our body sends this atp amp ratio and there are specific sensing mechanisms such as ampk one particular kinase enzyme which can sense this aspect now ampk is basically the master regulator of catabolism you can imagine when body is fasting catabolism is very important because body need to break down whatever it has stored and try to generate energy so ampk would immediately inhibit or inhibit other master regulators for anabolism master regulator for anabolism is mtor so obviously ampk blocks mtor and thereby stops anabolism and under a circumstances of fasting it's really important because we can't produce new stuff we have to break the existing stuff and try to get energy from it right ampk in several steps and with interact interaction with several interactors ensures the genes that help in ketogenesis or other fasted fasting related responses are transcribed so obviously we understand that there are molecular sensors in our body which can understand the nutrition input and they can act accordingly overall ampk can also generate uh, proteins which help in fat oxidation or fat breakdown okay this might be difficult for understanding but let me tell you you are running short of money but you still have to pay your bills so what you are going to do two things immediately you are going to stop saving right and you are going to break your savings to pay bills and at this scarcity situation you are not going to save right so these are the two things that our body does it stop producing new molecule and it breaks down fat which was existing in the body and try to utilize that in order to generate energy and run the body so next another aspect of intermittent fasting is it helps to uh, lower the insulin levels you must be thinking what's the benefit of that now insulin is a key hormone that allows glucose uptake into several tissues like glucose uptake into muscle glucose uptake into the adipose tissue but beside these role insulin has another important function insulin is a master regulator of anabolism as well so insulin helps the body to make fatty acids and eventually this fatty acid is stored in form of fat and you grow fat so insulin insulin level determines the anabolic status so if you can lower the insulin level it is good for the body now let us try to understand this thing in a detailed fashion so let's say you have two situation fasting and feeding now when we are in a fasted state we'll see what happens but before that let's try to understand when we are fed state what is really happening now in the fed state one enzyme known as acetyl coa carboxylase whose name is not at all important but this enzyme helps in fatty acid biogenesis fatty acid biogenesis now this enzyme can remain in two alternative form inactive form or active form the switch from inactive to active form is triggered by several phosphatase enzyme 
and kinase enzyme do the other way around. It inhibits the enzyme. Now, whenever we have too much glucose in our blood supply, there are plenty of acetyl-CoA, which is surplus, not required for producing energy. So it could work like a raw material to generate fat. Moreover, glucose elevates the insulin level in our body. Secondly, insulin triggers this phosphatase enzyme and ultimately activates this acetyl-CoA carboxylase enzyme. So as a combination of these effects, our body produces more fat and we can see fat deposition in our body. Now, when we are fasting, this enzyme does not get activated. Instead, kinase enzymes work and inactivate the acetyl-CoA carboxylase. In fasted state, glucagon level is high and insulin level is low. So glucagon in a particular signaling pathway activates kinase enzyme that inhibits fatty acid biogenesis. So it makes sense because under fasted state, we can't generate more fat. Our body would tend to break the fat instead of storing fat. So what we learned so far is very simple. Body do not make fat under starved state and body uh, utilizes existing fat and break down that fat to generate ketone bodies which can serve as an alternative source. As a result, you become thin, you lose a lot of fat. So what we understood from overall discussion is acetyl-CoA comes from the fatty acid breakdown under a fasted state and in the fasted state our body needs to run and perform properly. So in that state, instead of fueling our body with glucose, body generates ketone bodies which can work like a reserve fuel. Now you must be amused to understand that we are not the first thing, first people to do this intermittent fasting paradigm. Actually human ancestor had restricted feeding and prolonged fasting period because they kind of get their uh, animals or hunting once in a while and they might have a period where they don't have any food. So obviously they are fasting and their body is undergoing a repeated feeding and fasting cycle. So unknowingly, they used to do intermittent fasting. And these kind of intermittent fasting paradigms are present in many religious uh, cultures. For example, in Islamic uh, Ramadan month, they fast and feed in a specific time window. In Hindu culture, it is also present along with Christian, Judaism and many other cultures. Now, you must be thinking now that, okay, intermittent fasting is good, but is there any restriction in the feeding window while doing intermittent fasting? Yes, this is the most important question. Now, unlike keto diet, you don't have any restriction. You can get or consume all the food that you want. Your calories can come from carbs, protein or even fat doesn't matter but it is always recommended that we should fill our stomach with healthy stuff for example if we consume omega-3 fatty acid as a fat let's say we consume lots of vegetable and fruits as a source of carbohydrate and vitamins then it's always good for our body now, omega-3 fatty acid has tons of health benefits. All these vegetables would provide us with vitamins and other macros and micros. So that is how you can really get added benefit in this intermittent fasting paradigm. But the best results are obtained when we avoid processed or too much oily food. But once in a while, you can taste those popcorn, hot dog or tasty burgers. It won't really break the paradigm unlike the keto diet. That is why intermittent fasting is time-restricted feeding, where you can enjoy sometimes your favorite food. And that's the biggest advantage of intermittent fasting. Now, intermittent fasting is proved to increase your cardiac health. It also reduces inflammation. It reduces the chances of having cancer. It reduces joint inflammation and pain. It is good for focusing and cognitive, uh, cognitive uh, improvement. Lastly, it is also good for pregnant women. 
Now, when we start intermittent fasting, we should do a gradual stepwise uh, practice. First of all, let's say we have a 14 hours of feed, feeding and 10 hours of fasting window. We would increase the fasting window gradually. Next, we can have a 12 hours of fasting, 12 hours of feeding. Eventually, in order to get optimal result, we can get a 8 hours of feeding and 16 hours of fasting window. So, the closing of feeding window or minimizing the feeding window, window and maximizing the fasting window is a gradual process. The biggest mistake is doing it dramatically. So, body would not be responding well if this change is drastic. Body might have other side effects for that. But the best way to adapt intermittent fasting is this following this stepwise fashion where body is uh, adapting to these kind of new time restricted feeding paradigm and it would give you optimal results. Lastly, while you are fasting, you can have other drinks such as green tea, coffee or let's say water which doesn't have any calories to it but staying hydrated is really important for any kind of fasting. Now, the biggest mistake people do is putting a little bit of sugar in their coffee or uh, the green tea and that's absolutely wrong because you're intaking calories and breaking your fast actually. So intermittent fasting overall is really important and it is difficult to follow and you should always consult a nutritionist or dietitian for that. Now let's break some facts and myths regarding um, intermittent fasting. First of all, people think intermittent fasting would cause muscle loss, but it's not really true because it has been shown that intermittent fasting can increase your growth hormone level. So that means you can lose fat without losing your muscle mass. Second, people think that intermittent fasting can cause brain dysfunction because your glucose level would be low, you cannot function without sugar, etc, etc. But this is not true because once ketone bodies such as beta-hydroxybutyrate goes into the brain, it can be broken down and utilized to generate energy. So beta-hydroxybutyrate eventually in a stepwise fashion produce acetyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA is utilized in the Krebs cycle. To generate energy. Brain doesn't care where it gets the acetyl-CoA from, whether the acetyl-CoA is produced from, from pyruvic acid or that acetyl-CoA is coming from a ketone body. Our brain doesn't care. At the moral of the story, brain needs that acetyl-CoA for get going and that happens when we have ketone bodies in our system in prolonged fasting period. So, it should not create dizziness in our brain or any other aspects of brain malf um, malfunction should not occur. Now, recent research has shown, and the link is provided in the description, that ketone bodies or prolonged fasting in an intermediate intermittent fasting paradigm can improve your um, cognitive ability. So now in this video, we bust all those myths. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Many other videos are provided in this channel, which would be good for your knowledge. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me in Instagram and you can follow me in Facebook as well. My ID is provided here. And don't forget to let me know how you like this video in the comment. Please comment guys. Thank you.